Whimsical Workshop. This segment I want to talk about my pressing area and how to set up a great pressing area for your quilting. Uh, you'll notice I do not have a traditional ironing board. I have a big board that I have put on these cabinets. The cabinets all have little drawers in them. This has my fusible in it, buttons. This one is all full of threads. These are all threads. Um, but I use the same footprint in my studio without having to lose the space of a traditional ironing board. So my big board just sits on these cabinets. I've put some uh, supports underneath to get it to the right height. I know I'm short and it probably looks like it's too high for me, but this is the perfect height for me for pressing. So when you do arrange your pressing board, if you decide to go this route, make sure it is the correct height so you don't have any strain on your back while you stand here and press. Um, I have a big board, which is a rectangular 60 by 20 board. This gives me the greatest space to press borders, quilt tops, everything I do is rectangular, so my ironing board should be rectangular. That being said, I do have a traditional ironing board shoved in the closet for ironing clothes because this does make it very hard to press a, a dress. So that's my big board and on top of it, a couple years ago I splurged and I bought a wool mat that is the entire size of my board. If you have not tried these wool mats, I can't recommend them enough. They are uh, they radiate the heat up into the seams, so your seams are always flat and beautiful, and you don't have to starch the heck out of it or spray it and get it wet. This does a lot of the work for you. Uh, that being said, you do need to make sure that it is on a heat-resistant surface underneath, whether it's an ironing board or a table. Don't put it on your cutting mat because the heat will radiate through it the other way and can warp your mat. So that is why I have a wool mat on top of an ironing board. But I cannot stress enough how much these wool mats are. If you check out my travel segment, my quilting travel segment, I also have one of these that is cut to the size of a tray table. So I take that one on the road with me so I always have a wool mat. Uh, I have some other tools here that I love to have by my sewing machine I'll go further into in another video. Um, but mainly I have my iron, which is a T-Fall Ultra Glide Iron. Cannot stress how much I love this iron. You can buy it on Amazon. It has a ceramic plate so nothing sticks to it. It's very lightweight, but yet it has heft for me to press. So the weight in the iron is actually in the base of the iron and not all back here. So I don't feel as much strain and stress on my elbow or my shoulder because I press a lot. So this is a T-Fall Ultra Glide Iron. I will put the link below the video for this. It is from Amazon. But when I'm on the road, I wanted to talk about that iron. For on the road, I have this little guy. And I bought it at a Walgreens, I think, years ago. It is the Mini Rowenta Travel Iron. This iron has lasted me eight or nine years. And I will tell you why. Because I never put water in that. If you have a Rowenta iron, do not, actually any irons, don't put the water in the irons. They wear out twice as fast. They will leak. Um, it's just, if you want your iron, if you have a quality iron, you want it to last, don't put water in it. Use a spray bottle, which brings me to my next thing. Oh, and this is a little June Taylor iron cozy. So this is my travel iron. Sometimes I have to leave while it's still hot. So I have a lovely little travel iron cozy for it. Other things I have here are my strip sticks, which I will also demo in, in my uh, ironing area tools video. Applique pressing sheet. Can't live without my applique pressing sheet. I will tell you all the goodies in the video about that one. Purple thing. Always has scissors at your, your cutting table. I have small and big. I actually, I don't know if you can see it in the video, probably not, but I keep this little Keep this little whimsical thing full of my scissors right by my ironing board so when I'm cutting a border I can trim it off. When I do a miter corner I can trim it off. I have a spare zippy ripper here. These are all things that I feel I need to have by my sewing area, or my, I'm sorry, by my ironing area. And I have a purple thing because I always need that and I'm going to show you how I use that with the strip sticks. I have a second magnetic pin cushion. I have one on my ironing surface to pin everything, 
and then I have a second one in my sewing area to put on when I finish, when I pull them all out. So I have two pin cushions, one at the ironing board, one at the sewing cabinet, and I just rotate the pins between the two. And the last thing I love to have in my ironing area is this Ultra Mist spray bottle. Mine happens to say Iron Maiden with a crazy lady on it, and I fill it with Best Press. I like the unscented Best Press, especially since 99% of our quilts go off to clients, and I don't want them to have a smelly quilt. But I find that I like this way better than just having water, and I use it sparingly. I only use it if a quilt's misbehaving and it doesn't want to lay down, then I will pull this out and spray it on. If I'm doing small blocks, mini piecing, I will spray at the end, but I don't usually spray every step. I do it very, very sparingly because it can distort your fabric and then the fabric will relax back to its regular shape and you'll end up with some ripples in your quilt. So those are the things I like to have in my sewing area. I will do, um, I'm going to be doing a video on all these tools and how I use them. So make sure you look for that. And I'm going to be doing a video on pressing tips, how to press seams open, how to press bias, and how to press um, just standard pressing. So make sure you look for that video as well. I hope you've enjoyed the tour of my ironing area. I hope this helps you go off and set a great functioning pressing area for yourself. If you have any questions about any of these products, just leave me a comment below. Otherwise, I will put a link for everything in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And happy quilting.